We now have five new phonograms to learn. Let's begin with this one. This is er, two letter er. Then we have aw, two letter aw. And we also have aw, two letter aw. What do you notice about these two spellings of aw? That's right, they both begin with uh, an a, and the a says a a aw, that's the third sound. One ends in a u, uh, and one ends in a w. Which of these may I use at the end of English words? That's right, I can use this one. Why may I not use this one? Because English words do not end in I, U, V, or J. This is aw, af. Go ahead. Aw, af. And I, three letter I. Let's practice these new phonograms one more time. We have er, two letter er. Aw, two letter aw that we may not use at the end of English words. Aw, two letter aw that we may use at the end of English words. Aw, af, and I, three letter I. Now let's go ahead and try reading all the phonograms that we have learned so far. This is just a great way for teachers to get a little head start on learning the phonograms uh, from their students. But remember, with the cues in the back, and if you move the cards from back to front, you'll be able to learn them alongside your students as well. So let's begin with this one. I, three letter I, N, E double E, always says E, M, L, K, O, two letter O that we may not use at the end of English words, J, V, U, O, O, I, I, E, Y, H, or G, J, a u u a t oi that we may oh sorry oi that we may use at the end of english words s z r r by the way this is two letter r and then we have r a f oi that we may not use at the end of english words e e a two letter a that we may use at the end of English words, d, a, two letter a that we may not use at the end of English words, sh, k, s, b, ya, i, i, e, qu, a, a, o, x, r, a, o, u, a, that we may use at the end of English words, V, w, o, u, that we may use at the end of English words. K, two letter k, used only after a single short vowel. E, a, a, z, a, that we may not use at the end of English words. We can also use etymology to help us remember which phonogram to select when there are multiple options for spelling. Here's a neat example that was shared uh, with me by a linguist. If you look at the words on the screen, we have wreath, wrench, ring, wrestle, wrinkle, wrist, and write. These all have something that is related in meaning. Can you figure out what it is? Well, maybe you have. What it is is that all these words have something to do with the motion of twisting. When you're writing, your, whisk, your wrist twists. When something's wrinkled, it's twisted. So this is a way we can help students remember which uh, or when to use the two-letter er phonogram. All right, let's go ahead and discover another spelling rule. I have a list of words for you on um, the screen. You can also find these in your teacher's training manual on page 121. I want you to take a few moments and to underline the three letter I phonogram. And then I want you to think about when is three letter I used? All right, maybe you've discovered with me that three letter I is used only before the letter T and at the end of the word. This is summarized uh, by the spelling rule, 
rule phonograms ending in GH are used only at the end of a base word or before the letter T. Let's test this with another phonogram that ends uh, in the GH. Here we have caught, daughter, slaughter, taught. Notice um, the aw, a phonogram is saying aw, and it's only used uh, before a T. How about in laugh, laughter, draft? You'll see it's used at the end of the word or before a T. What's really neat about this spelling rule is it's one that I didn't know from my previous training or research. I had a struggling student who came to me one day uh, who I was tutoring and he said, I think I've discovered a new spelling rule. He had internalized the process of how to think critically about the language and ask questions and discover patterns. And he discovered a way to, or one of this rule, he discovered that all the phonograms ending in GH are used only before a T and at the end of the word. So it might be that as you go through this program and as you begin to ask good questions about language and begin to look at the language and look for patterns that you discover a new rule. And we would love to hear from you at Logic of English because we are always wanting to grow and to provide the most accurate picture of the language for students. On page 122 of your teacher's training manual, you'll see a phonogram bingo card. This is one of my favorite ways to practice phonograms with students. What we do is I will read some sounds and the students will cover up the sounds. And I usually play cover all where I have them cover all the sounds on the board. And then as they uncover the sounds, I have them read them back to me. A fun way to do this with young students is to use something like goldfish crackers or chocolate chips, some sort of treat. And then as they uncover the sounds, they can eat their treat as they read them. So that is one tool that you can use in your classrooms or you could create your own bingo boards. Let's now go on to spelling list five. Spelling list five can be found on pages 123 and 124 of your training manual. Once again, I highly recommend that you turn off the video at this point and practice dictating the words on your own. Then turn the video back on and watch me dictate it and compare it to your dictation. Now that you've completed your dictation of spelling list five, let's go ahead and do it together. The first word is better. This book is better. Say to spell bet ter. Okay, what's the first syllable? Bet. B, E, T. Second syllable, ter, T, er. Go ahead and write it. Make sure to sound it out. And now help me to write it. B, E, T, T, er. And how will we mark it? We'll underline the er. By the way, what would this say if there was only one T in it? It would say beater. The next word, word number two, is perfect. She got a perfect test or perfect score on her test. Say to spell perfect. How many syllables? Two. First syllable is per. Let's sound it out together. Remember, you're sounding it out, and I'm going to say it very quietly this time. P er. Second syllable is fact. Let's sound it out together. F-e-c. This is a k s t. Very good. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. First syllable is per. Er. Second syllable is fact. Fact. And how will we mark it? We'll underline the er. The next word is block. We live on the first block. Say to spell block. All right, let's sound it out together. B, l, a, k. Why did we use a two letter k? because it's a single short vowel. Very good, go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. B, U, A, K. And how will we mark it? We'll underline the two letter K. What is the rule? Two letter K used only after a single short vowel. 
The fourth word is night. The moon and the stars come out at night. Let's sound it out together. N I T. How many letters and which spelling of I will you use? That's right, it's three letter I. Go ahead and write it, and as you write it, sound it out. And now help me to write it. N I T. And how will we mark it? We'll underline the three letter I. Three letter I is used only before the letter T and at the end of the base word. The next word is mother. My mother is kind. Now we're going to say to spell moth er. We're going to exaggerate the O to say moth er. Go ahead and what's the first syllable? Moth. M A V. Second syllable? Er. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. M A V. Second syllable is er. How will we mark it? We'll underline the v. And what sound of v is this? That's right, it's the second. So we'll put a little two to remind us it's saying its second sound. And then we'll underline the er. The sixth word is brother. Our brother is feeling sick today. Brother. We're going to say to spell broth er. Go ahead. What is the first syllable? Broth. B, er, a, v. Second syllable, er. Very good. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. First syllable is broth. B, er, a, v. Second syllable is er. How will we mark it? Uh, we'll underline the v. And what sound of v is this? It's the second. And we'll underline the er. The next word is daughter. Their daughter plays the violin. Daughter. Say to spell daughter. How many syllables in daughter? Two. First syllable is da. D a. Notice how many uh, letters we use to spell the a sound. Second syllable is ter. T er. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. The first syllable is da. D, A. Second syllable is ter, t, er. And how do we mark it? We underline the A and the er. Notice the phonogram ending in GH here is used before a T. The next word is aunt. My aunt plays the piano. Aunt. Let's sound it out together. A. This is two letter A that you may not use at the end of English words. N t. Very good. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. Aunt. A n t. How will we mark it? We'll underline the A. The next word is play. The children play outside. Play. P l a. Now, what kind of A will you use here? That's right, two letter A that you may use at the end of English words. Go ahead and write play. And now help me to write it. O A. And how will we mark it? We'll underline the two letter A. The last word, the tenth word, is destroy. Gophers destroy the grass. How many syllables in destroy? Two. Very good. The first syllable is D. D E. Second syllable is stroy. S T R O I. Which kind of oi? That's right, oi that we may use at the end of English words. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. D E S T R O I. And how will we mark it? We'll put a line over the E. Why did the E say its name? It's at the end of the syllable, and we'll underline the away.